Doug, who is who is Dougie? Tell us a little bit about you. I mean, your childhood. What what, do you, what, uh, what made you become a therapist? What's what's your story? What else have you done in your life? What what else I, is interesting about you? Uh, grew up in Kansas City, where it's sub zero right now, and I managed to get this cold. That's why you've got a bit of a throat thing happening. Yeah, yeah, that and the fires out here in LA mixed in the throat. Ah, right. Yes. Um, I. Uh, but grew up there, school, went to college. And when I was finishing up college, a girlfriend I had at the time was moving to Australia. And although we kind of both knew the relationship wasn't going to last, I thought, why don't I go with you? And I could help her get started. Uh, you know, just get a place, half price, all that. And... It was somewhere that always fascinated me. Um, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, had just come out, and I really wanted to find out what kind of mindset yeah. makes that kind of film. And uh, so I went there for a vacation. And after a few weeks, went up to her one day and said, I don't want to go back. And it wasn't that I was in love with Australia. That would happen later. But just that the... Uh, it was so good for me to not be in the world that had been familiar to me and to be where driving was on the other side of the road. And most words I knew had different meanings and all this kind of stuff. Why was, was that so good for you? Why was that, that complete change? Most people would freak out. In actual fact, that I have a friend that has never left Australia because she's terrified that if she goes somewhere else, she's going to get lost and she's not going to find her way around. But you, you did the opposite. You said, oh, this is, this is, there's something good in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would compare it to a sensory deprivation tank, if you know that. Yes. Where, where, where you get in and your, your eyes and your ears no longer can do anything for you because you're in a completely dark, completely silent environment and your brain can then go wild ways. And for me to be somewhere where the American news was on page five of the newspaper, where uh, it's other, you know, who were the biggest superstars in the world? Well, some were the same, but, uh, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, it was, it was split ends and Aussie crawl and, and uh, in excess before they made it internationally. And uh, just uh, pop music was Molly Meldrum, not MTV. Uh, everything was different. And that was really good for me just to shake out of the mindset I'd been in of what's real and what is not. See, see, that's very interesting what you say, you know, be shaking out of the mindset uh, I, I agree with you. I think it is those moments when I felt the most uncomfortable shaking out of my mindset yeah. that that has allowed me to learn something new that I would not never have learned otherwise. Exactly. Is that what you're talking about? And learn new things about the world, new, learn new things about where you're actually from. So of course, learn things about the new place, but very much learn new things about yourself. Yeah. And that's, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, because in, in, in workplace mental health and, and also helping um, businesses uh, co in, in my coaching um, business, helping businesses take things to the next level, the, the aspect of, of personal power, a, a, per, a person with power, it's a healthy person. Not, not necessarily power over others, but power, power over themselves. It's a healthy person. As a therapist, you gotta understand then you know one of one of the the key elements of, of a mental health problem is helplessness, and, and usually yeah. it is learn helplessness. So yeah. we have so that, that in my world means we're born powerful, but we learn to be weak, right. and right. sometimes the the journey is about hang on, realizing hang on, you know you're not weak, you're really actually powerful, and 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 I needed those moments that you describe. Is that is that Yes. What's your take on that? I would agree thoroughly. And to, and of course, to also recognize where you are weak is the best yes. thing. I will not be 
uh, the next running back for the Green Bay Packers. It's just not of course. Uh, and that's okay, right? We're supposed to say, oh, but Doug, yeah, I think you can. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, th I, I think there's strength in that, isn't there? There's power yes. in knowing, hang in on. Knowing, knowing your limitations, knowing what's real, again, what's real and what isn't. And you're taught in any culture, you're taught that in certain ways. And it's great to get out of that culture and suddenly go, oh, I'm not saying they're all bad people or something like that, but that the lessons I learned about what's real and what isn't aren't necessarily true. And, uh, and what's important and what isn't. And you begin to realize how a different culture will look at something else in different ways. And I mean, I'm a big believer, uh, you know, 99% of the problems in the world could be solved if people would, would have the ability to see through other people's eyes and understand other cultures and understand these things. Um, I think we, yeah. we, we get in our way an enormous amount. Yes, yeah. And, and one, one of the things that I, um, I, I like about how you, um, I've seen you, I've observed you operate, and, and it has been consistently over two years, it's, it's not like an accident, it, uh -huh. it, that you, you do have personal power, and yet it's not an overbearing thing. It's it's a it's a kindness. There's a kindness to the power that you have, um, and I particularly find that really really attractive. And I, I see. I think people are, are drawn to you because of that. I, I, was was there a moment that you had to make a decision? Um, I will be kind before anything else. Was there a moment in your life where you? Wow. Or is that something that happened gradually? I've had to make that decision a number of times. Um, I, I guess the better, the best answer I could give is that the culture that I come from, I mean, yes, American, but more specifically, Midwestern culture values niceness to an enormous degree. And as you, as I got older, to realize there's a difference between niceness and kindness. And yeah, most of the time they're the same thing. And then there are the times they aren't. And there are times it's not kind to be nice. And kindness is the far greater thing. Wow, that's deep. That That is so, so true, isn't it? Um, nice people will try to be nice in all circumstances, but they will not do the further step of, maybe I'm not gonna, you're not gonna like me if I do this, but I need that. It's a way, that it's a way of being that's not completely wrong. It's just, again, as one individuates, to use the psychological term, to realize I'm not going to actually choose to be that. Uh, I don't know if the movie Nebraska did, was much in Australia uh, not two years ago or something. Um, I saw it here in California, and the audience liked it. It was a very good movie. I was just about on the floor laughing through the entire movie because so much of it is about the niceness of the Midwest. And it captured it so brilliantly and I found it just hilarious. And that yes, these are wonderful, wonderful people and they can drive you up the wall, just like Australians, just like Californians, just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>